<laughs> OTB AM is brought to you live each morning by Gillette Labs for an effortless finish to your day. Now we're turning our attention to Gaelic football and I'm delighted to welcome David Tuberty to the show. David, good morning to you. How are you? How are we keeping? I'm you're very good. Dead. You're you're now a former Clare footballer. I am, unfortunately. <laughs> was it an easy decision in the end? Had you made your mind up at the start of last year that that was going to be your last year or was the end of the season like, okay, I've had enough of this? Um, I think it was probably more from the Derry game last year. I kind of, when we were walking off Pro Park, I kind of, Something inside me probably told me that it was that was kind of the that was kind of it for me. And uh, uh, the last few months now, or not the last few months, I suppose the last few months I've um, home and on and whether I'd stay on or not. And every day it'd be different whether I'd stay on. And but um, I finally just made the decision, and uh, I think I think it's the right decision for me anyway. Well, I was gonna I was gonna ask like was there a relief when you made the decision and started telling people, or was there a little bit of you thinking actually you know what I was, I was still pretty good. <laughs> um, there was I suppose there was always people saying oh, there's one more year in you and there's one more year in you but um, the, I think um, I think when I when I said it and told people that um, it was finally it I I think there was a relief <clears throat> for me that because um, everybody was always coming up and asking me go on you stay on another year but I just I think I think it was just I have six, uh, 15, 16 years of it done now with Claire and um, I just, I just felt that it was time. Is there a temptation there, David, with the condensed calendar to kind of stay on because you don't have to commit for for as long as you might have had to, you know, five, ten years ago? Yeah, I suppose it's, it's shorter. Like as as a few of the boys were telling me, there's there's only uh, five or six months in it, and it's all over. Uh, where a couple of years ago, like you're starting back, and you start back nearly in October, end of October, and you're, you're going till. July, August, um, which is a long year, um, but um, there was this temptation of going for five months. Um, but I suppose I didn't have much training done up to up to now, and I think I would have been trying probably do, in catch up at the, at that time. Um, probably wouldn't have been ready for the first few league games, and um, and when when I want to play, um, I want to give it my all from the day one. I don't want to be coming in halfway through a, ch- a league or championship. David, your, your scoring record is phenomenal, like record breaking. Um, was there extra pressure on you to perform when you were playing well? Like, this is kind of a, a, a double edged sword where you're playing well and you've got responsibility, and that's great. And obviously, you're, you're doing great stuff for the team. But with that, then comes leadership even earlier in your career than maybe would be normal for somebody at your age when you do start to score heavily so early in your career. Um, I suppose I didn't really t- think of it that way. I suppose uh, um, I always thought I had a job to do, and I picked in time the forwards to to get the scores and to to put up as many points as I could. Um, I just thought it that from day one that that would have been me. But um, no, it's it's tough. It has, it's it's a hard one from uh, from an early age and stuff. But that get trying. There's a lot of pressure on you. I remember my first day against Carlo above in Milltown that. Uh, I think I missed a thirteen yard free. <laughs> and that was my first game out for Clare and um um it was a tough one that day. Uh, I think we lost by a few points, but um uh that was a small bit of pressure, but this uh, you just get used to it. Was that the Tommy Murphy Cup? No, that was uh, my first uh, full year with Clare was the my first league game against Carlo right. in the National Football League. Yeah. I, I, you'd had your debut the previous season under Pawdy, <clears> had you? <throat> Yeah, my first game was against Tipperary in Ardfinnan um, in the Tommy Murphy Cup. Yeah, um, I was playing. The, I was playing with the Clare Juniors at the time. Um, we got to Munster final. We lost by a point to Cork, and a few weeks later, I was called up into the panel uh, to play in the Tommy Murphy Cup. And uh, I was delighted to get my my first uh, Clare appearance uh, under Paddy O'Shea. What was that like? Um, you know, because at that stage, Paddy's legend had been well established as player, manager and uh and you know, this is kind of um it's it's a different stage of his career really, but there was a Messiah feel to Paddy whenever he was doing anything. So what's that like for you as a, a junior footballer called into the senior team with a bit of a reputation, I suspect, locally anyway, as somebody who might be a significant part of Clare's future? Um, it was a huge call. I was I was delighted. Um I suppose uh Paddy O'Shea comes uh, calling on you to, to enter into the senior panel. It's it's uh, it's uh, it's an honour. Um, 
and just to listen to him talk in the dressing rooms before the games and stuff. Um, and I suppose in Art Finnan, uh, just, just to watch him, uh, remember there was a lot of people out there watching him coming into the car park there that day, <laughs> just to see him. Um, uh, Tipperary supporters and care supporters, but um, just to just to play under Potty was a it was an honour and um, uh, pity there was there wasn't another year in him. Yeah, absolutely, and you know the um, that that um, career that he had is obviously something that we we kind of. Um, in retrospect, really pay much more attention to and understand a bit more, and just the the knock on impact, the kind of ripple effect that he had in, in um, football generally. To, to I'm really interested in your view on how the game has evolved from the time when you make your debut um, to now, and the the changing role of uh, forwards in particular. Was there a period where it got less enjoyable, or actually was your role okay because you still had the responsibility to be on the end of moves? Um, I suppose. Halfway through my career, I suppose. Well, I say, I suppose uh, the division. I suppose division three and stuff like that. Uh, division four and three. Um, in uh, a few years ago, I suppose eight or nine years ago, they, they started to bring in back in sweepers and crowd out defences, which was a bit frustrating. Um, there was always fellas sitting in front of you, and I suppose it was news to me. I was uh, seeing fellas standing in front of you, blocking your your pass to win the ball and stuff. Um, but it has evolved a, lot, a long way. Um, I think. Uh, I think these days, I think that the mark in the forwards, I think that should be got rid of. I say, um, it's just. I think it's, talking from a forward, I think it's a bit unfair in the back. You, you like to see the forward win the ball and take on the man, and which we used to do years ago. Um, but um, now they can. The mark is kind of. It's, it's a bit frustrating. It's a bit frustrating for. Um, the backs, um, but it has it, it's evolved a lot, a lot um, over the years. But um, no, it's it's uh, it's tough at the moment. It's tough to play inside the full forward line at the moment because there's you, you've um, you're asked to track back, um, defend, and come out to the forty-five or come back to the halfway line, crowd out the team and or crowd out the opposition. Um, so things have changed a long time because the early days I probably wouldn't have passed the twenty the twenty-one or the thirty. <laughs> You get a nosebleed going back that far, I'd say, David, back in your early days. Uh, <laughs> just asking me what I've been doing back there. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly. The the rule changes year on year. Like, is it tough for players to follow these consistent rule changes? Because even as a as a viewer, sometimes you're 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 starting off a league and championship year, going, "Jesus, I don't know what the rules are anymore." Yeah, I suppose they're always been changed. Um, I suppose the I remember I came in the first year. I think there was a yellow card. Um, brought in and if you got a yellow card you were sin binned or something if you got two yellow cards so I remember we played Carlo that day and um, I think we were down to 13 men because we three people got yellow cards or something like that and then I, I don't know did they miss one or two games for us and they were the key players for us and we just we just didn't adjust it at that time um, but down through the years it's, it, it's always chopping and changing and uh, I suppose it gets frustrating for players Um I suppose the black card is probably a good rule that was brought in. Um, I think the forty-five from the or the sorry the kick out the mark from the kick out is a great rule. But as I said, the the mark in the full forward line, I suppose it was intended to be brought in for say um, David Clifford's catch in the All Ireland final last year. The the high ball he went up and he fielded it over his head. I think it was brought in for that. But you can see fellas and they're winning handy ball down around their toes and they're caught putting their hand up for a mark. I think. Uh, um, yeah, it's 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 chopping too much chopping and changing for me. Um, the uh, evolution in Clare football that you've seen from the bits where you you needed an outside manager to get a bit of attention to Colin Collins coming in and now being the longest serving intercounty manager I think there is in the game. Um, what what was it that Colin Collins brought that allowed the team to become an established Division Two team and really begin to dream about growing Clare football? Um, I suppose Colum Colum had um he was manager of Cratlow. Um he was uh, manager of the minor team, I think, um for Clare early on. And he kinda knew the I think he knew the underage in Clare football and the potential that's there and I think that's the difference between uh a homegrown manager and an outside outside manager because he knows the ins and outs of Clare football. He's uh Cratlow over a senior team. Um and then they played the the divisions, uh, the QZ Cup. They played, I suppose, Division One, Two, Three, and Four. And like, he got to see all those players coming through. 
which was huge for uh, huge for us because we got a lot of young fellas coming through from uh, at the same senior clubs. But um, earlier on, you got the likes of Carla Connor, you Jamie Malone came into the panel, which they wouldn't have been senior senior players, but. Um, you could see Cullum, Cullum saw that uh, the potential in them players, and they brought him through, um, which was huge. And mm. it was just, it was just um, Cullum was just organised from day one. I remember his first meeting um, in Innes that he just came in. He just goes, "Listen, as we're we're a top sixteen team," and um, he uh, just talked about how that's how good we we are, but we're not showing our potential and. You can see us now that's a bit of organisation and um, you can see where Clare football is right now. We're, we're playing Division 2 football with the last uh, se- uh, eight or nine years, or seven or eight years, I suppose. And uh, it's, it's great. It's great for the, the football in the county. Could you have foreseen, David, in 2007? Like, I'm sure it, over across 15 years in, in Gaelic football, even in terms of sports science and how, quote-unquote, professional the game has got, there's been remarkable changes. Um, unbelievable. Uh, I suppose uh, the early days after a match, you'd win. You, you'd uh, you go in f- into for the food after matches. You'd have a, a steak, a massive steak. Like wouldn't you be able to eat it and stuff like that. And, um, the S and C coaches have come in. Um, I didn't really, I didn't really start doing gym work. I suppose until um, probably Michal McDermott came in uh, with Michal Cahill. He brought those are those are proper first S and C coach came in and. You've got dietitians, you've got psychologists, you've got um, you've got anything you want now that uh, you'll get. You've got a forwards coach, defensive coach. You've got coaches for here and there, um, and that's what Colin has brought to Clare football. He's he's um, he's adapted to what the Kerrys and Dublins have have um, have been doing over the years, and we might uh, we're we're there uh, with all the the backroom team. We've got all the backroom team analysis, everything. So. Um, uh, players come a long way, and since I started off playing, did you embrace all that? Were you? Did you find that enjoyable and, and helpful? Oh, I did. Yeah, um, I was saying if I had the uh, what's the, as I said, the dietitians, S and C coaches that are there at the moment right now. I, uh, if I had that when I started off playing football, um, it would have been it would have been uh, way better. I think young lads these days get a get a, a massive advantage from where players started 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing that we should talk to you about is the all-time scoring record in the in the National League. Um, GA records aren't brilliantly kept, but there was certainly this sense that what you were doing was fairly remarkable over the long period of time. At what stage did you become aware of this? Um, I suppose uh, I became aware of it uh, after the game. I think um, a, 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 Claire, a reporter here, Claire, uh, Owen Brennan, came up to me and he just uh, said to me, he goes, uh, David, did you realise what you've done? And I hadn't a notion what he, he was on about. And he goes, they were after becoming the all-time National League top scorer. And I just, it didn't really hit me um, at that point. Um, but um, I suppose one of the things that I saw on Monday morning uh, was your search journal and you're reading it out in the back of a newspaper, I think it was. But um, when, I, when I saw it in the newspapers the following day, I just realised uh, um, how big it was. I, I, I'm amazed. I thought that maybe, like you know, a couple of years back, you would have thought somebody would have pointed out to you, like, oh, that's like can, I can go after that, but you didn't know about it at all. No, I haven't a clue. Right, so, Jesus. Didn't even know. Didn't even know what I scored in the league, or didn't, I, didn't know what I scored in the championship. Because like this is the thing, right? In American football, they would have a ceremony. They would have stopped yeah. the game for five minutes. There would have been like you know, uh, and uh, red dancers carpet. on, and there would have been like Fly confetti over. guns. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, there was nothing like that. I, I was. I was uh, I, you see in the NFL, uh, I watch the NFL a lot, and then you'd, you'd see um, this receiver record was broken or touchdown record was broken. But in the GA, I suppose that's something that we, we don't do. And um, I suppose, I don't know, is, uh, I think Killian Connor is the top scorer in uh, the, the championship. Um, and I know that I've I seen comments that uh, people kind of give note that, uh, no, Killian Connor is the top scorer and stuff like that. But um, <laughs> people are kind of. Checking them on it, that's no, it's a it's a national league record. So you probably only get to appreciate these records and stuff, <clears throat> the individual <clears throat> feats after you've retired as well, David. Um, I suppose you do. Yeah, it's it's great to look back and to see um, what you what you've achieved. Um, uh, well, um, 
Mickey Kearns was actually uh, he called in to me here um, a few weeks after I broke the record. He's I think he, he kind of comes around the area, um, so we know know a local guy that knew him, and he called in here, and I got a photo taken with him and stuff like that, um, which was which was great, which was great to have and uh, still have it there. The the other edge of that of you being Claire's, I guess target man and and uh, principal scorer is that no matter who you play against, you're probably getting put up against the the, the best man marker or the tightest defender. Uh, who were the defenders you didn't like coming up against? Like who were the, the the toughest defenders you came up against across your career? Um, well, I suppose early on in my career, when when I used to in Division Four, you probably uh, Morris O'Garman from Waterford was was uh, he, he was a very tight marker. Um, then you've got uh, Johnny McCarthy in Limerick. He was we got to play him a lot as well, and um, I came up a good few times against Mark O'Shea. You can see what Mark O'Shea has achieved over the years, and um, <laughs> just to just to come up against and play that these top defenders was was uh, was great because that was tested you. And it, <coughs> after the game, you'd, you'd when uh, when they'd be marking you, you always kind of learn off them and uh, you see what do I have to work on for the next day, and what you'd be looking back on video and all that kind of stuff and seeing um, the kind of runs I, sh- I I need to make the next day. So it was always a help to mark the the best players, and uh, it was it was great great to mark these guys during my career. Has the sledging from defenders developed over the last fifteen years? Even like I enjoyed the the Padraig O'Hara, David Clifford stuff got a bit of attention, but I'm sure it's um it's it's improved in its originality, I guess, over the last fifteen years. The sledging, ah, uh, it has, but uh, I don't really take any notice. Um, if anything, it kind of riles you up, it gets you going. Like I, you wouldn't really say things back to you or, into, or say things back to defenders or anything. The way I, I tried to answer them was to get a, put the ball over the bar or put the ball in the back of the net. And usually if you do that quick enough, that uh, kind of shuts them up a small bit. Um, but I never really got that much uh, sledging over the years. Um, but... Um, you hear a small bit, but not major. It's a bad idea to sledge the uh, highest scoring footballer of all time. <laughs> so that one will generally tend to bite you on the ass. I just wanted to ask you before we go about um, Division 2 of the, the Allianz Football League next year. So it's Limerick, Cork, Mead, Loud, Clare, Derry, Kildare and Dublin, obviously. And um, half those teams will end up playing for the Sam Maguire and some of them will end up not playing for Sam Maguire by virtue of the, the Connacht draw in particular. Um, yeah. Was that was was all that stuff when it was going on in the background? Were you talking about that in the dressing room, or did did that kind of exist separately? That whole uh, proposal B and those conversations, or were you definitely involved? Kind of saying, "Ah, come on, this has to happen." Um, I think last year, I think when the I, I, it came in last year about say, if, um, I think there was a few teams that if they got to the provincial finals, that if you came third last in Division Two, that you would be. We would be out of the All Ireland series. Um, I think that was that was a huge thing as well. Um, I, I think that gets teams really. You really have to hit the ground running in the national league um, uh, this year. Uh, I suppose last year and this year, um, but um, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough division. Um, you've got you've got Dublin and Derry down there um, at the moment. Uh, Derry flying high after last year and, and Dublin getting relegated, which which was a huge huge thing altogether. Um, but they'll be going into get back into Division 1 and try and get back the All-Ireland champ- or the All-Ireland um, but you can see that it's going to be a, t- a very tough div- div- division with Cork um, big win over Kerry there the other night um, and then you've got Kildare down there and you've got promoted Limerick and um, it's, it's going to be uh, you've got Meat down there as well new management as well so it's, it's, it's going to be it's going to be a tough one it's going to be very tough there um, in Division 2 uh, plenty of time for you now to work on your golf handicap. What are you playing off at the moment? Um, I play off six at the moment. Right. So, so you'll be scratched by the end of the year. Is that what we're hearing? <laughs> um, I don't know about scratch now, but uh, we, we'll uh, we'll work on. It. I need a bit of lessons first. So, uh, <laughs> um, so a uh, few lessons, and hopefully I can get it, get it as low as I can. Well, listen. We hope you enjoy the retirement. Um, obviously, a very busy time for you, no matter what. But uh, thanks a million for joining us. Cheers, David. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. That is the legend that is David Tuberty, the highest scoring Gaelic footballer of all time in the National Football League. That that's some list.